Okay, so now we're going to look at um, arithmetic uh, sequences. And the definition of a sequence, a sequence is just a function, but it's a function just like uh, any other function, but the domain of the function, the domain of the function, instead of being the entire real number line, the domain of the function will only be the set of numbers one, two, three, for the counting numbers. So that is what a um, sequence is. A sequence is just a function whose domain is restricted to the counting numbers, all right? We use notation. Instead of calling the independent variable x, we call it n. And usually, these functions, the functional values, we call them a. So instead of having an f of x, we're going to look at having an a of n. And we're going to further change the notation by, instead of using parentheses, we're going to use the subscript. So this tells me what the independent variable is. It tells me the function is a, so the functional values are values of a, just like the functional values here, f, the functional values. Um, the independent variable is n, means the same as this, okay? So we're switching notations. The independent variable is the subscript. All right, so we're going to look at a specific kind of uh, sequence right now. The sequence that's defined by a linear function. So if a sequence is defined by a linear function, remember linear functions, for instance, f of x, we had linear functions defined as, defined as mx plus b. mx plus b. And what we're going to do is we're going to define the same kind of function and restrict this domain to the uh, set of counting numbers, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have to have a slope. Instead of calling it m, I'm going to call the slope of my function d. And there's a reason I'm calling it d. d is going to be known as the common difference in a little bit, OK? So instead of calling the slope m, I'm just changing the letter and calling it d now. So d is the slope. The independent variable up here was x. My independent variable is n. It's the set of natural numbers or counting numbers. So the slope gets multiplied by the independent variable. Same here, I multiply the slope, which is d, by the independent variable. And I'm going to add in a constant called the y-intercept, b. Now that doesn't make sense for this line, because this line doesn't take 0 as an input. So I would never be plugging in 0 for uh, n. Therefore, this thing doesn't actually ever touch the y-axis because it's restricted to the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So that number really loses its meaning when it comes to a sequence, the number b. But it is still considered kind of like the y-intercept if you consider the fact that we're just restricting the domain of a linear function, OK? So that's the linear function. The first term of a, such a function a1 would be d times 1 plus b. d times 1 plus b, all right? Which is just d plus b. The second term of such a sequence, a2, when I plug 2 in, the second term is going to be d times 2 plus b. And actually, I have the d plus b, and then I have an extra b, I mean an extra uh, d. You see, I have two d's and one b, so I have d plus b, which is actually a1. a1 is equal to d plus b. a1 is d plus b. So I can change this, I can rewrite this as this gives me a1, a1 plus d. So I'm going to get now an expression for the nth term in terms of a1 and d, the common difference. All right? So let's see. Uh, a3, the third term, when I plug in 3, would be equal to d times 3 plus b. And I could use that same trick. I'd have a d plus b, which is actually a1. But in this case, I'd have not just one d, but since there are three of them, I'd have two d's left over, so that this would equal a1 plus 
2D, 2D. And if you notice, there's a pattern emerging. A1 was just A1. Uh, but A1 was actually D plus B. A2 was A1 plus D, the slope. A3 was A1 plus 2D, 2 times the slope. And if you continue this pattern, you'll see that A4 is actually going to be A1 plus 3D. And if you continue arbitrarily, um, let's see. Continue this arbitrarily. You would see that a five would be equal to a one plus four d, and if you just continued, you would see that a n, the nth term, the nth term would be equal to a one, a one plus. Well, since this is five, that was four. It has to be n minus 1, whatever this number is, that number is 1 less, multiplied by d. And this is the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So if you start off with a linear function, if you start off with a linear function, and you generate a sequence by restricting its domain to the natural numbers, you generate a sequence based on a linear function, you get what's called an arithmetic sequence. This is an arithmetic sequence. This is its nth term. So, for instance, if you know A1 and you know the common difference, this is D, it's called the common difference. And the reason it's called the common difference is because it's the difference between any two consecutive terms of the arithmetic sequence. And actually, it's just the slope of this uh, linear function. It's just the slope. So, for instance, if you're given, uh, let's rewrite this up a little bit higher. So we have a n equals a one uh, plus n minus one d, and let's take a look at an example where uh, a one is equal to three, and where d is equal to negative 2. All right, and what I want to do is I want to find the nth term um, formula and find, uh, let's say, a 7, the seventh term. So I want the seventh term. All right, so this nth term formula tells me a n is equal to a 1, which they gave me as 3, plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, which they gave me as negative 2. So you can distribute. You get 3 minus 2n plus 2, or 3 plus 2 gives me 5 minus 2n. So the nth term formula for this particular um, sequence is that a n is equal to 5 minus 2 n. And that means if I want to find the seventh term, a 7, I just do 5 minus 2 times 7, and that gives me 5 minus 14, which is uh, negative 9. All right, so the seventh term in this sequence is negative 9. And if you want to know any term, the nth term would be 5 minus 2 times whatever the value of n is. So that is an example of finding not only the nth term, given a1 and the common difference d, but also finding a particular value. Here's another example.
Okay, so find the nth term and use it to find the tenth term. All right, so let's see. Let's use this one here where we know a... Uh, we know... Uh, 15 is the first term, 18 is the second term, 21 is the third term, and 24 is the fourth term, and it continues on like this. The first thing you want to make sure is that there is a common difference, but uh, that means that the difference between the consecutive functional values has to be the exact same. So you check this difference, 18 minus 15, 18 minus 15 is 3, so there's the difference between the first two. Then you check this difference. 21 minus 18 is also 3, so those two have the same difference. So you check this difference. That difference, 24 minus 21, is also 3. So all of these consecutive terms, each pair of consecutive terms, has an equal difference. That difference is D, the common difference. It's really the slope. Um, the change in Y, the change in X would be 1, because you're going from 1 natural number to the next, and the change in y would be the difference between consecutive terms in the sequence. So the common difference is really just the slope of this function. We just call it d instead of m because it's the common difference. So once you identify the common difference, we also have 15 being a1. So I have everything I need. a1 is equal to 15, so an is equal to a1, which is 15, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. The difference between each consecutive term here is 3. So you can simplify this. You distribute the 3, you get 15 plus 3n minus 1, or minus 3. You have to distribute, right? 15 minus 3 is 12 plus 3n. So we get here, for this particular sequence that we were given, that a n is equal to 12 plus 3n. So there's a n. They ask us to use that to find the tenth term. So the tenth term, a 10, is equal to 12 plus 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30. So this is 12 plus 30, which is 42. So the tenth term in this sequence is the number 42. All right, I want to call your attention to one last example here. Okay, now let's say we have, um, this is the nth term formula, right? Let's say we have two um, arbitrary values for this uh, sequence. Let's say we have a, uh, let's say i and a j. And what we want to do is we want to find the nth term from a i and a j. Well, let's try to kind of figure out how we can find the common difference and a1. Those are the two things we need. We don't necessarily have a1. We have an a i and an a j. If i or j is 1, then everything should be good, but we can't be certain that either i or j is 1 based on the information here. So, let's see what happens if we take a i and subtract a j from it, and let's assume that i is the bigger one. i is bigger than j. Let's assume i is bigger than j, okay? All right, so let's see. Then this would give us, well, a i would be AI would be A1 plus I minus 1 times D. And then I'll subtract from that, I'll subtract from that AJ, which is A1 plus J minus 1 D. Alright, let's see. So that means that AI minus AJ is equal to well, when I distribute, I get a1 um, plus di minus d. 
And here, when I distribute the negative, I get negative A1. And then I'm going to distribute a negative D here. So I get negative DJ, negative DJ uh, plus D. And let's see what happens here. Well, the A1s cancel. What else cancels? Let's see. The negative D and the positive D cancel. And I get AI minus AJ is equal to DI minus DJ. OK, so I can factor out the D out of this. And this cell tells me that D times I minus J is equal to AI minus AJ. I can use this to find D. I can use this to find D. So if I'm given AI and AJ, then D is equal to, I can divide both sides by I minus J to get AI minus AJ divided by I minus J. Now look at this. This is the formula for slope. D, the slope, is equal to AI, which is the Y value you get when you plug I into the function A, minus AJ, which is the Y value you get when you plug J into the function A, divided by I, which is that value of N, minus J, which is that other value of N that we get from this domain here. This is just the slope, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So if you're given two values, I and AI and AJ, and you want to find the uh, common difference is just the slope. Take the two numbers that you're given and divide by the two subscripts, larger minus smaller, all right? OK, so let's try one of these. All right, so let's say we're given, we want to find the nth term. You want to find a n. And we're given, given that A5 is equal to negative 6, and A10 is equal to 14. So we have that information. Well, the first thing we should probably find, we need to know what D is equal to. So let's find D. Let's find D. Well, let's see. This says that D is just the slope. So I'm going to take the y value for the larger uh, index, 14, and I'm going to subtract from it the y value of the smaller index, minus negative 6. And I'm going to divide that by the larger index, 10, minus the smaller one, 5. So that's literally y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we get uh, this is going to be 20 over. Uh, 5, which is, is that 4? So there I have the common difference. Now, since I have that common difference, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this information right here to find the, uh, the formula. To find the formula, let's see. I know that a n should be equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times d. The problem here is that I don't have a1. So I'm going to revert to the fact that this is a linear function. I'm going to look at this a n as being equal to d times n plus b. And I already know what d is equal to. I already know that d is the number 4. So this is 4 times n plus b. So I'm just going to use one of these in order to figure out what b is. All right. So instead of using the nth term formula, which relies on me knowing a1, and I don't know a1, I'm just going to look at the fact that this is a linear function and try to find the y-intercept, which really has no meaning as far as the terms of this sequence are concerned. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're not going to use this. We're not going to use this. We already use this to find the common difference. So now I'm going to say that a5, a5 is equal to 4, which was the common difference, times n, which is 5, 
plus B, the y-intercept, which is what I'm actually looking for here. And I know that A5 is equal to, equal to negative 6. So I get this equation here. I get the equation, this is 4 times 5, 20, plus B is equal to negative 6. So I can find B. I just subtract 20 from both sides. I get that B is equal to negative 26. B is negative 26. All right, so now I can find AN. AN is then equal to, well, let's see. I found out that D was equal to 4. 4 times n, and then I found out that b is negative 26. And then you can try it out. You can see um, if you plug 5 in, this is 20 plus, or 20, 5 times 4 is 20, and then you subtract 26, you get negative 6. If you plug 10 in, this is 4 times 10, which is 40. 40 minus 26 is 14, so it fits exactly. This is the nth term. So. If you're given two terms that are not either one equal to A1, then you're going to have to use this method to find the common difference. And instead of using the um, nth term formula that, invo that involves A1, which we don't know, you can just look at the fact that these are linear functions with restricted domains. All right, so that's. Uh, pretty much all you'd have to know about nth term, finding the nth term. Those are the kind of examples that you'd be looking at in your homework.